What if I told you a tiny chip with just a few resistors can literally do algebra for you in real time? No coding, no calculator, just physics. Today, we'll design one of the most powerful op-amp circuits ever, the difference amplifier. We're asked to design an op-amp circuit whose output is a weighted difference. VO equals three times V2 minus five times V1. That screams difference amplifier. If you've met the difference or subtractor amplifier before, you might remember its output looks like a longer expression with resistor ratios all over it. The nice part is we can choose those resistor values so the math collapses to the exact constants we want. If that formula isn't fresh, no stress. I'll give you a quick refresher, and if you want to go deeper, check our op-amp playlist for lots of handy builds and use cases. The good news? It's surprisingly easy to build. All you need is an op-amp chip and a few resistors. Power it up, put a feedback resistor from the output back to the inverting input, and connect another resistor from the non-inverting input down to ground. Then feed in your signals. One goes into the inverting input through its resistor, and the other goes into the non-inverting input through its resistor. That's the entire circuit. The output voltage comes out as a weighted difference between the two inputs. And don't worry about the word weighted. If we choose the resistor values carefully, the output becomes simply the difference between the input voltages. Sounds almost too simple, right? Let's prove it by walking through the fundamentals. We'll strip away the fluff and keep only what really matters. In the schematic, we won't bother drawing the dual power rails just to keep things neat, but remember, they're always there in the real circuit. Here's what we do show. A feedback resistor from the output to the inverting input, another resistor tying the non-inverting input to ground, one signal fed into the inverting input through its own resistor, and the other signal fed into the non-inverting input through its own resistor. And that's it. That's the classic difference amplifier, often simply called a subtractor in its simplest form. Let's give the math a clean landing pad by labeling everything. The input voltages are V1 and V2, and the output is V out. We'll set ground as zero volts, handy when we start writing equations. The voltages at the inverting and non-inverting inputs will be V3 and V4. Now for the currents. Through the two input resistors, we'll define I1 and I2. The op-amp's input currents are labeled I3 for the inverting input and I4 for the non-inverting input. The feedback resistor carries I5, and the resistor from V4 down to ground carries I6. Great, everything's labeled. Now we can move into the analysis in a few crisp steps. Because this circuit uses negative feedback, the golden rules apply. Rule one, no current flows into the op amp inputs. That means I3 and I4 are both zero. So the current coming through resistor R1 has nowhere else to go. It must flow through the feedback path RF. That gives us our first equation. I1 equals I5. On the non-inverting side, the current through resistor R3 also has nowhere else to go except down through the resistor to ground. So I2 equals I6. That's our second equation. Rule two, with negative feedback, the op amp drives its output so the inverting and non-inverting inputs sit at the same voltage. In other words, V3 equals V4. That's our third equation. With those three rules in place, we can now use Ohm's law to turn currents into voltages and see exactly how the output responds to the inputs. Let's start with equation one. I1 equals I5. Looking at the circuit, I1 flows through resistor R1 and I5 flows through the feedback resistor RF. By Ohm's law, each current can be written as the voltage difference across its resistor divided by the resistance. Substituting those expressions into the equation gives us a relationship for V3, the voltage at the inverting input. Now, let's do the same for equation 2. I2 equals I6. Again, watch the resistors the currents flow through. I2 flows through R2, and I6 flows through R3 down to ground. 
Writing both currents with Ohm's law and substituting them back into the equation gives us an expression for V4, the voltage at the non-inverting input. From equation 3, we know V3 equals V4. So, take the expressions you found for each side and set them equal. Work the algebra gently and make V out the subject. The first result looks bulky, that's the standard difference amplifier formula, but it's exactly what we want. Now zoom in on the weights in that formula. Call the non-inverting paths overall gain A and the inverting paths gain B. These aren't mystery terms, they're just resistor ratios, the knobs we get to turn. In plain English, the output is a weighted difference, and those weights come straight from our resistor choices. So the whole result collapses into a clean spoken equation. V out equals A times V2 minus B times V1. Easy, right? And here's a quick gut check. If all the relevant resistors are equal, the non-inverting path gives A equals 1, and the inverting path gives B equals 1. So V out equals V2 minus V1, the pure subtractor. That's the heart of the difference amplifier, an op-amp using a few resistor ratios to do real-time math. No code, no clocks, just physics. Don't bother memorizing the final formula. Derive it. After a few tries, you'll be able to tame almost any op-amp circuit. Now, let's solve our specific target. V out equals 3 times V2 minus 5 times V1. We already know the difference amplifier form, so all that's left is choosing resistor values to match those two weights. Step 1. Match the V2 coefficient. This is our sixth equation. Step 2. Match the V1 coefficient. This is our seventh equation. From the seventh equation, we get RF equals 5 times R1. Now, substitute the seventh into the sixth equation the ratio between RF and R1, into our seventh equation, and we get R2 equals R3. So the final design rules are RF equals 5 times R1 and R2 equals R3. Pick convenient values that satisfy those ratios. We can choose suitable values for R1 and R3, then calculate the needed values for RF and R2. For example, let's take R1 as 10 kiloohms and R3 as 20 kiloohms. You can choose other values, but it's best to stick with practical resistor values in the range of 10 kiloohms to 100 kiloohms. With those choices, RF becomes 5 times R1, which is 50 kiloohms, and R2 equals R3, which is 20 kiloohms. And that's it. We've designed the circuit so the output is exactly 3 times V2 minus 5 times V1. It's tempting to just memorize the final equation, but it's much more powerful to know how to derive it from the fundamentals. That's what really makes you confident in circuit design. And if you'd like to dive deeper, check out our op-amp playlist. We've got plenty more interesting examples waiting.